If someone told you in January, all the schools in the city, the state, the country, the world would close, not just for a day or two. You'd say they were crazy, but I know what happened. I know. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I know what really happened. All of you were wishing for school to close just for a day or two, not, not long. You were praying for a snow day. And then, and then everybody was hoping that we wouldn't have to go back to school on that Monday after winter break. Remember when they changed the DOE schedule? You, you guys did that. You were wishing and wishing, please let them say no school Monday. And then all those wishes got added together with every other kid in the city, in the country. And it was just, pfft. well, now that schools are physically closed for a while. Welcome to the cyber sky. Let's learn something. Use this time to work on self, have fun, and learn new things. Create some music. Art. Dance, chat with friends, do some exercise. Oh. Do anything but resist the urge to plop down in a comfy chair and watch TV all day. As much as our education has been somewhat disrupted, we are also learning to use technology to learn, communicate, and engage with our friends. Many of us were not using video conferencing and K-4 wasn't using Google Classroom. And now all your teachers are making videos. Everything you're doing right now relates to the future of work and the future of life. These are the 21st century skills you've been looking for. The fourth industrial revolution has been taking place since the 1900s. And now the NYC DOE and schools all around the country are finally ready for a brave new world. Many of us are wondering, is this uh, temporary or is this the new normal? I call it the future of learning. Just so you know, I've put teaching new things in tech on hold for two reasons. One, we felt that using this technology and having to learn all these new ways to turn in your assignments is equivalent to what you would have been learning in technology anyway. And secondly, it was crucial for me at this time to focus on my role as tech coordinator for the school. Our school has about 60 teachers and 525 students all engaged in remote learning. Since this is the first time many of us are attempting this challenging endeavor, we all need tech support. I want to peel back the curtain a little bit and let you in on something that I found fascinating recently. You know when you're in Google Classroom and the teacher selects copy for each student, that means all of you get a doc and you have your own doc and you can write your answers into the doc and you can read it. Well, sometimes your doc doesn't seem to be working or it comes out blank. Did I do the settings wrong? What's going on? Even in tech class, I'll share a video with everyone and on some computers it'll play and on other computers it won't. We don't know why three or four people won't be able to get that video. And it's very frustrating. And sometimes you might think it's the teacher or it's the computer, this old equipment or the Wi-Fi that we use here is not good enough. No. When I contacted Google for tech support and I said, these are the issues that we're having with Google Classroom um, all throughout the building. They said, that's strange. That shouldn't happen. And they went and looked into our account and they found actual mistakes in the code. They messed up on their end. Google had mistakes in the code. So now I've sent them screenshots of what we're experiencing and they're actually troubleshooting the code line by line, looking for the bugs. Just like when we were doing code.org and we had to correct the mistakes in the code, same thing that they're doing. So I found that fascinating that it was actually coded wrong. It's not a, a setting or anything we're doing wrong. So. Be patient with your teachers and we'll be patient with you and we'll get these things sorted out. We're all learning. The teachers are learning as much as you are. Let's approach everything with a growth mindset. Whatever doesn't work this week, it'll work next week. So since I'm not assigning any tech work for a while, all work that you see from technology is optional. But if you miss tech, log into everfy.com, log into code.org, log into typing.com uh, and do those websites and just Go along at your own pace and, uh, you know, have some fun with it. Use it to take a break. Do some typing. Go on in Credibox or Button Base or for grade 7 and 8, any of the DJ software that we've been working on. Whatever you do, stay engaged. Don't tune out. Learn something. Solve something. Make something.
break something, create something. And speaking of creating, the arts team is working on some exciting projects for you. Mr. Sarno has a new YouTube channel with art projects. Mr. Role is making some videos for you. Coach Johnson has been sending out those exercise challenges. And I'll be creating some new content for CyberSky videos. The first two uploads were to help teachers with distance learning. But now I'll be creating some fun content around Rubik's Cubes, robots, drones, and more. In fact, send me your ideas and let me know what you think I should do my next video on. Did you know that CyberSky, the name, came from you? Two Arts and Letters students started calling me that about three years ago. And I said, hmm, that has a terrific ring to it. Hello? But in all seriousness, what are you going to do with your time over these next few weeks? How will you make the most of this great new adventure? For reasons beyond our control, we are all on this journey together called distance learning. Or as I like to call it, welcome to the cyber sky. Enjoy your stay. And while you're here, let's learn something.